What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to put a timing chain kit in this motor and do a balance shaft delete, which we do for racing with these cobalts that I race. Uh, 2.4 Ecotech VVT. Uh, first step is obviously to pull the valve cover off, pull the spark plugs out, because you're gonna to need to rotate this thing over and get it top dead center, and it's just easier to rotate with the spark plugs out of it. So get the valve cover off, get the spark plugs out, get this timing cover off. Um, the bolts for the valve cover are 10 millimeter. Majority of the bolts for the timing cover are 10 millimeter. There is one 13 millimeter that goes through here. And then the tensioner you have to take off before you can even get to the timing cover is a 15 millimeter that goes in here. And then the, uh, the bolt for the crank for the balancer is 21 millimeter. But after you take the balancer off, you're going to put the bolt back in so you can turn this thing over and get it to top dead center. Um, when you're at top dead center, on this cam, there is a triangle pointed here. And on this one, there's a diamond pointed here. And let me bring this in for you here. So there's the triangle. And as you can see, this link is a different color. And over here, there's the diamond. And this link is a different color. If you come down here to the crank, you'll see that there is a dot right there. And that link that's supposed to line up with that dot is a different color. When you go back together with the new timing chain, you have to line those colored links back up. Uh, usually they're like green and red or blue and red and one's black. They're all, it depends on the manufacturer, but there's always a link that's, there's three links that are a different color and they have to line up with the dot, the triangle and the diamond so that everything's timed correctly. And uh, by top dead center, that's number one piston is all the way up. That's the position we're in right now. Uh, I don't know that you need to have these lined up with their dots to take it apart. They definitely need to be lined up to put it back together. But if you were to bring the triangle and the diamond up to you know 45 degrees and have this dot down here, which to me is actually a little bit off, but it should be down lower. The timing might be off a little bit on this one. But if you had those in those positions, it's probably still top dead center if you look down through the spark plug hole. And you could probably still get away with it doing it that way. Personally, I like to bring them all the way around until everything lines up the way it's supposed to be when you go to put it back together. So that's the first step. Once you get to that point, then you can start taking guides out for the timing chain. This one's a tensioner for the timing chain, so this has to come out. I'm drawing a blank right now what size that is, but when I get to it, I'll tell you. So that's gotta come out. Then these two guides here come out, this guide up here, and then you actually have to take these cam phasers off. Uh, those are 18 millimeter, and we can get the timing chain out of there, all right? All right, so we've got the uh, this all loosened. We got the guides loose, except for this one here. I still got to take this one out. You uh, you saw in the time lapse. I took this plug out of here, right there. Plug goes in that hole. There is a 10 millimeter bolt behind it for doing the uh, for getting this guide out of here. Something just fell in my oil. Don't know what it was. A screw out of my impact gun. That's not good. That's not good. So, anyways, the Allen wrench that I just used to pull that plug out is a 10. The Allen wrench is a 10. The tensioner up here, I didn't actually have the metric socket for it, but an inch and a quarter fits it like perfect. So, that's inch and a quarter to take that. Tensioner out, 10 mil Allen to get this plug out. There's a 10 millimeter bolt in there if I can get my fingers on it. That I just loosened up. I think I'm gonna have to grab her needle most.
10 mil bolt holds that guide in there. So I took an 18 mil and I loosened the cam phasers up. Set that right there. Set that one right there. So slide the cam phaser off the pin, drop the chain. I personally like to put the cam phaser right back on. It's a little fun sometimes. back on there. Same thing with this one. Pull the chain off, cam phaser back on. So this guide will come out the bottom. This guide actually has to go out the top, so I'm probably gonna have to take this cam phaser back off. Set that up top. This one actually comes out the top. It's a little awkward getting it out of there sometimes. So that one comes out the top. All of these guides are part of the kit when you order, order the timing chain kit. So, that's it for the chain. Probably should have went out the top. There, there's the timing chain. Also part of the kit. You're not gonna need that either. Now we're down to the balance shaft water pump chain. It's your water pump up here. Okay, some guys replace that while they're in here. I haven't at this point, I haven't really seen a reason to. So now you're gonna take all these guys out. This one here is a tensioner. Now when you pull this apart, you wanna pay attention to this tensioner because if this little cap right here is missing, You'll be able to tell because you'll be able to see the internals of the tensioner. There's a little cap on here. If that's missing, it's down in your oil pan. And if it's down in your oil pan, it can block your pickup and it can really mess stuff up. So you want to make sure that that's still there in that tensioner. I have found them before missing. And again, if you find a guide that's broken, usually it's this one that's broken. When you find them broken, the pieces of that are going to be down in your oil pan. So if you find a broken guide, you're going to have to pull your oil pan off and get all the pieces out and you're gonna to wanna to pop the pickup off and make sure that it's not blocked with any debris. But so far, nothing's broken. We're doing pretty good, so let's move on to the next part. There's the tensioner. Keep that. All, we're keeping all these guides. These aren't part of the kit. These guides are going back in. And on this stuff, I'm just going to keep the bolts right with it. That way I don't lose anything. Okay, this does come with the kit. This is an oiler. So you can take this off. Um, all right, now you gotta fish this chain out of here, which can be fun sometimes. Because it is still kind of tight. There, got it off of there. Get it up off of that gear. Off of here. And get it up off the water pump. I'm just gonna leave that one hanging because it's going back on. It'll be the first thing that goes back together. Okay, so now you've got keepers holding these balance shafts in. They're 10 millimeter as well. All right. Sometimes getting these out can be fun.
that's what your balance shaft looks like. So what we're gonna do is right behind this bearing here is we're gonna cut this shaft off right through here. We're gonna cut it off. And then we'll just put this piece back in. As long as you leave that chunk there to keep this bearing captured, we'll cut this off. We'll put this piece back in. We lose all that rotating weight and then we're good to go. So let me get the other, see if I can get this other one out of here now. I know you see me prying on it, but I am trying to be gentle. They don't want to mess it up. But they can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Yep, it's gonna take a little bit more than that. Vice grip and a pry bar. Win. All right, so now we've got that one out. And again, looks just like the other one. You're gonna cut it right back behind here. Um, I've seen guys do it with porta bands. I've seen guys do it with a grinder. I thankfully have access to a lathe. So I'm gonna run these down to my uncle's house. We'll cut them with the lathe. We'll bring them back to put them back in. But here's where the oil trick comes in. There's oil, there's an oil valley in there that leads to these balance shafts to oil them. And because we removed them, it goes right here, because we removed them, there's no longer going to be pressure there for that oil gallery. So you have to block it off. And there's a special tool for that. Hopefully you didn't watch this video to this point and you're now realizing you need a special tool. We made our own tool, which I'm going to grab right now. I got it. Looks like this. Okay. Now we took measurements and we figured this out a couple years back when we first started building these cars and we made this tool. Um, you can buy a tool like this from Brad Chandler at Brad Built, Brad Built Parts uh, through Facebook. Uh, he has a tool like this that you can buy from him to do this job and you will need this tool to do this job. So. That goes in there, wiggle it around until you find the inside bearing, it slides in. And what you're going to see is here, when this is all the way in, there's still a gap there, right? Between the collar and the face. And what you do is you take a hammer and you hit this and you drive it in until this collar is flat and you do it on both of these balance shafts. It pushes that center bearing back enough to block that oil galley and then you're good to go. You cut the shafts, put them back in. It does take a little bit of force to move that bearing. It just kicks the balance shafts on the floor. That's a good that's a good one. Sound change. My uncles, my father, they they were machinists by trade, mold makers and machine fixers. That's why we have access to lathes. It's why they were able to make this cool tool. I didn't make this tool. I take credit for it. My father, my uncle made it. it just like that now you can cut the balance shafts off and put those back in and put that other chain back on and that's what we'll do next i gotta go get these shafts cut I'll be back. all right so when you go to cut these off you want to take the gear and the carrier off and you want to cut it right there keep this piece so it captures the back side of it doesn't let it fall off right there Right about there. I'm gonna take that grinder, cut that off. 
So when you're done, that's all you're left with, right? Now you could just take your grinder, clean that back side up nice and flush, and put it back in, but here we have a lathe. So in the other room, we'll chuck it up in there and clean it up. This is what it looks like when it's all clean cut. Nice and pretty there. I'll take one apart so you can see it. That's what it looks like. Now that it's been cleaned up on the lathe. So put this back together in here. This is key. It's got a notch in it. The gear back on there properly. The bolt. Now when you go to Put these back together there's nothing to hold on to for the shaft really so you got to be careful somewhere here i got some loctite you're never going to take this part again so apparently that leaked a little loctite on there put that back in there And then very gently, I'm going to hold right onto the gear here. That's the only way you're going to be able to hold it. And just gentle. Drop it. Yeah, that's, that's what you should do. Right in the oil and cleaner that I had. Grab a rag and clean that thing off. Okay, so that's back together. Now, if you look at these gears, they are labeled. One is labeled, you probably won't be able to read it because it's kind of from the factory, it's not real easy to read, but one side is labeled intake, the other side is labeled exhaust. The intake one goes on the side of the motor that the intake goes on, goes on this side, okay? I'm gonna need a little oil to get that back in there, but let's do the other one here quick. My leaky Loctite bottle. It's got Loctite all over it. That one got a lot. Put that back in there, it's perfect. It's not going nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. Try to hold this one a little bit tighter. Two ugga duggas. <laughs> that ought to do it. Yeah, that's the getaway way to do it for sure. So this one, you definitely can't read it. It says exhaust on it. That goes on this side where the exhaust is. Okay. A little oil here. Off my parts. That sliding in there without too much of a fight. You do want to get them straight, as straight as you can get them. Pull this one back out. Some oil. Oil that up a little bit. Something like that. Light taps. Make sure it's going in straight. reason this one the same one that came out hard it's giving me a hard time that one went right in but this one the one that came out hard is fighting me usually if you get them straight they will go right in this one however there we go got that back in there all right, now I gotta find the bolts. The 
believe they're these two little short ones here. Now, going back together, I just snug them up with this and I come back with the wrench and tighten them later. There is a torque spec for it that you should probably be following. But I don't. I should, but I don't. Okay, now the guys in tension. No. This is what I use Koi's performance timing kits. I buy them from Rock Auto. I'm just checking because I'm pretty sure the guys don't come. No, they don't. Here's the oiler that I talked about. That goes right there. Here's the old one. Take the screw out of it. Put that in. That is part of the kit, the oiler. Right there. This chain goes back on. Now, before you heard me mention Brad Built Parts, Brad Chandler, um, he makes a kit for this that pretty much gets rid of all of this stuff and just has a shorter chain that runs the water pump off of the crank here. Um, that's for you people that want to be super extra fancy. I'm a cheapskate. So I do it this way, as you can tell. Um, yeah, he's got a nice kit that gets rid of all of this stuff, makes it a little bit easier. There are colored links on this one, just like the other one, except for we're not actually using the balance shafts anymore. So all we're doing right now is driving the water pump. These gears are just here to hold the chain, basically, and drive the water pump. That's pretty much all we're doing with it now. So all these guides have to go back in. Bear with me for a second while I try to remember where they go. I think this is the one that goes here. Contrary to popular belief, I don't do this all the time. I've done it probably half a dozen times, so I do it more than I like to. But that bolt. all these guides back in here and last put this tensioner back in the small one here that I talked about has to go in last and I'm just dropping bolts everywhere Something ain't lining up. I need to take this one out all together. Put this one in last. See, like I said, I don't do this all the time, so it's kind of a puzzle. Sometimes it's a bit of a pain to put back together. Give me some slack here. I'm thinking that doesn't go like that. Missing something here. What am I missing? I'm dropping stuff everywhere. Part of what I'm missing. Goes that way. That's why. I had a moment. It happens. 
There we go. That's better. Head that guide upside down. Helps when you put them in the right way. That makes way more sense. All right. That one goes like that. Not if I can get it lined up properly. There. All right. That one goes there. This one goes back down here where I had it before. Like so. All right. We'll run these in quick and I'll tighten them up with the socket. You know, I'm an amateur. Don't do what I do. You know, go get the torque spec and your torque wrench and do it right, okay? I mean, that being said, I've never actually had one come apart, so I guess I got that feel. That Brad torque. Okay, there. See? That part's back together. Tensioner goes back in. Cap is still there on the tensioner. I don't know what I did with the bolts to it. But that goes in there. As soon as I can find the bolts. I think it's... Are these two long ones? Maybe. Maybe it's the long ones. Yeah, I'd say it's the long ones. So, I gotta depress that. I depress the plunger down. So we get the bolts in. This is why I use the gun, because it takes it's a lot faster. You don't need to switch them back and forth. Someday we'll get there. Alright. Alright, so that system's back together. Now you're gonna move on to the actual timing chain. Uh, the Koi's kit, open that up. And like this. There are two dark colored links, one there and one there, and one gold link, okay? The gold link and the dark link are close together because those are the top. The other dark link is the bottom. So, now the fun part, getting this bad boy in here. Normally I have a pick. I don't know what I did with it. Like so. Alright. So we got this up in here. I'll just toss it back there. Set this on. Find the pin wherever that landed. You can tell by where the diamond is. Should be right about there. Turn this one on. Triangle, I lost my triangle, triangle on that one. Okay, that goes there. Now I'm gonna pull this one off so it's off the pin. And I'll show you why here in a second. Where'd my colored links go? Going this way. Alright. 
Nice. So the gold colored link I'm going to put on the diamond. The other link is going to go on the triangle, like so. So the gold link is on the diamond. The dark link is on the triangle. This dark link is pretty close to this dot down here. If I pull it tight. Right about there. All right. So now in this kit, you'll have the new tensioner, the black one that goes on this side. So you got to fish that bad boy up in there like this. in there like that that sneaky little bolt that I had to get out with the needle nose goes in there take the extension you can't get your fingers in there get that one started this is a really fun job to get oil all over your hands makes it really hard to Maneuver and hold tools and all that fun stuff. And the other bolt, these bolts are collared. They slide through the plastic. Now, something about this doesn't feel right. I'm going to put my eyes on it. I don't like it. I knew where my flashlight was. Oh, the big one. Well, it looks okay. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why it looks different or feels different. Something about it feels weird though. It feels like it's bound up. You know what? Now looking at this, this guide is broken. This piece is missing off of this guide. So, I guess I'm going to have to take the oil pan off and find that broken piece. So that's not good. But that's where we're at. So, still... Don't think I like the way this guide's going in. No, because that guide is rubbing. On that. Something's not right here. I'm not sure what, but we definitely have an issue. I'm wondering if this is the wrong timing set, which would be awesome in the middle of a video to have the wrong timing set. So we gotta do some investigation here as to what is going on. Why this is different. Yeah, that's one thing about doing them all the time is I recognize that something wasn't right. Unfortunately, something's not right. So let's fish this back out of here. We gotta figure out what is going on here. They appear to be the same. But something isn't right. Not sure what. We definitely have an issue here, though. 
They appear to be exactly the same. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why we're having an issue. Unless maybe the broken piece is stuck up in there somewhere. In my way. And I can't see it. Which I don't see. So I'm a little confused as to why this part doesn't want to line up properly. Well, you know, it's one of those things when you're trying to do a video. Of course it's not going to go smoothly. Why would it? That would be too easy. Okay, so. What is the issue here? I think the issue is I'm putting it in backwards. That's what I think the issue is. I think it goes like this. Yeah, so the issue is just me. The issue is me. That's the issue. So like I said, I don't do this every day. But I've done it enough to know something was wrong. It's all part of the process, I guess. I could delete all this out of the video, but then it wouldn't be realistic, right? Just delete the mistakes out. We're all human. So, there. Sometimes it's a good idea to just take a picture before you take something apart so that you know how it goes back together. I've done these enough times, I should know. But apparently, apparently walking away from it, you forget. And I walked away for like two hours. On video, it seemed like 10 minutes I was gone doing that. Cutting those balance shafts, but I actually was doing other stuff. That guy's in. Everything up here moved. Nothing's where it's supposed to be. Oh. This video is a mess. That's what it is. This video is a mess. Sometimes getting these lined up is kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna lie here. It can be a real pain in the butt. So, that one is lined up. This one is now a tooth off. Okay. So, We have a 15 16 wrench. It fits on the camshaft. This one is on the pin where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna put the bolt back in it. Drop that bolt on the floor. Okay. Your exhaust cam phaser is back where it's supposed to be. Now you're gonna have to take the spring out of this one to get this pin on which means turning it this way, slowly, until you get it, like so. So, that one's on, that one's on. We are not quite where we're supposed to be down here. We 
here, one tooth off. So some stuff moved, not abnormal. In fact, we're gonna move it with this to get it lined up. Okay, now that one's lined up. That one's on the dot down here. This one's on the diamond. This one's on the triangle. All your marks are lined up. I forgot to put this in. We're on a roll. Can I fish it down through the center? Let's find out. No, I can't because it goes on this side. So I screwed up. Again, we're on a roll. So now I have to pop this cam phaser off again. I forgot to put this guide in. Man, this video is fantastic. It is the best. It's gonna pop now because it's all spring loaded because of the valves. Like that. Okay, feed this down in here. Let's just drop everything. Start from scratch. All right, this goes down in here like so. When it wants to cooperate, it does anyways. Okay. That was supposed to go in there before I did that. But I failed miserably. Bring this in here. Get it lined up with the triangle. Like so. This is where it's supposed to be. Man, struggle bussing. That's why. There we go. All right. So now we have to do the same thing, but with the opposite phaser because I didn't have that guide in there. So wrench on here. Got to come up till I find the pin right there. Put tension on it. Okay, double check. That link is on the triangle. That link is not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> that one's where it's supposed to be, though. It's a good time. I'm having fun. This is, uh, yeah, this is awesome. So, what did we do here? Why... Why are we out of time? Oh, apparently that hopped. This video is not going well. I need to... You ever seen someone look defeated? check here you're gonna notice an edit in the video there because I had to regroup for a minute but anyways now that we've got the phasers where they're supposed to be got the guide in where it's supposed to be all right this link is on the triangle this link is on the diamond this link down here is on the dot on the crank gear okay so now this has to go back in here At this point, all the guides, except for the top one, are back in. Now, it comes down to this tensioner that we took out with the inch and quarter socket. Now, when you get this out of the box, the plunger is depressed from the factory for installation purposes. The old one that we took out, it sticks up, see? It's not depressed. So, this one is depressed. We're gonna put this in here. Put 
these bolts in before these slide off and make a mess of everything again like we did before so let's get this figured out get those in there so they don't slide off all right so like i said there are torque specs for all this stuff you can google it and look it up and i very well most likely i'll use i will do torque specs on these might not do it in the video, but I'll come back and do that and set the torque specs on those. I don't know what they are. I gotta look them up too, which means I need to shut the video off to do that. But at the end, we'll get to that. So this one here, I tightened it. I'm putting this in now. Socket. good so now what you've got to do is you have to find something that won't damage the guide and you stick it down in here and you give it a whack and it releases the plunger I have this piece of I don't know I think it's plastic or something that I had laying around it came out of something I put this down in there. You're actually putting it right on the chain, really, but you can kind of get on the side of the guide, right about where that thing is. You give it a little whack. Here, click. And then it takes all the tension out. Okay? Pretty easy. As long as you get the timing stuff lined up, which is fun getting that top gear stuff to line back up and get on the shaft. There's your new top guide. Find the two bolts for that. done with this I usually like to take the ratchet and turn the motor over a few times just to make sure the timing is correct if it is not your valves will touch your pistons and that is bad so just to make myself feel better about it make sure that I didn't screw it up I like to take this put it on here and just spin the motor over a couple of times Make sure nothing makes contact with anything. Everything spins freely. Everything looks good. And just like that. Get a new timing set. Balance shaft delete. And we're good. I'll link down below for Brad Chandler, Brad Built Parts on Facebook. If you want to get the tool for doing the balance shaft delete. Or if you want to be super extra fancy. And get the balance shaft delete kit that Brad sells that gets rid of the balance shafts all together. Um, I'm not sure what that costs, but you can look it up. I'll link it down below. After this, it's new gaskets for your timing cover, new gaskets for your valve cover, everything goes back together. Obviously, I still got a torque pulse, but keep it creative. Happy building.